Maguindanao Pass by Isidro L. Retizos. When Sinagtala was only two and a half days old, her withered grandmother came, and she placed in the child's hand a fresh lily, and in the other a small pallid pearl. Sinagtala shall grow soft and delicate like a lily, the grandmother smiled toothlessly, and pearls she shall admire, pearls she shall love. Some day, when she's grown up, she'll own priceless pearls taken from oysters, living the blue seas of far away Maguindanao. Over two hundred silver moons had passed since then. The Talisay and Kamagong trees had grown taller and stouter, and the first part of the prophecy came true. Lily by the river, she was admiringly called by the village youths. She would only smile at them and say, But I am not beautiful. For to the village maiden to be beautiful, one must have strings of lustrous pearls. Yes, pearls that would caress her graceful neck and follow the tender curve of her young, shapely breast. But she did not have them. She had only the tiny, pallid one given her by the old prophesying grandmother. And thus... From the time Sinagdala was born, the Talisay and Kamagong trees had blossomed and fructified sixteen times, and the village urchins she had played with when she was a small girl were now grown to barangay warriors with muscles of steel and chests of iron. Ay, ay, sixteen flower seasons had passed since first she came, and still she had no pearls, only that little pale one. But one morning, their sawali door rustled. Then slowly it opened. The head of an alipping namamahay showed. Sinagtala, the basket weaver, daughter of Pirang Kawayan, is wanted by Lakambini, daughter of the Raja, chief of the Mainila clan. Lakambini wants me. The girl laid down her work. She desires me. Why? I know not, but she orders you to come soon," said a slave, and withdrew. And Sinagdala went, walked through the grassy paths under the shady palm trees, till she reached the Raja's house. "Wave you two beautiful baskets for me," said the Kambini with the thin arms and the flat breasts. The Raja's daughter toyed with a string of lustrous pearls. Priceless sea gems brought by the wily Moros from their faraway land, and Sinagdala's eyes glowed with wonder, and her lips slightly paled with desire. If she could only have gems like them. Need you those baskets soon, favorite of the moon? She asked. Hurry not the making, the Raja's daughter replied. They must be strong and lovely, for they shall be gifts to the mother of Walangula, the son of a chief, he who rules the Pasigan barangay. And who is this Walangula? How foolish! The Kambini laughed as her color deepened. You delight me with your innocence. Go now, you inquisitive one. So Sinagdala left. She went to the riverside to gather bamboo and reeds and young bamboo joints to be used in the basket weaving. And all the while, she thought of the pearls adorning Lakambini's dark neck and flat and appealing breasts. If she could only wear them, ah, how much better if she owned them! She parted the bushes which brushed at her face and scratched her soft cheeks. The bambans grew in a marshy side. She would lose her balance if she leaned any farther over the water for them. Girl with a slender body, a voice sounded near. Wish you a fall into that stream. She turned. Ah, Magiting, the fisher of the deep, a warrior from the Pasigan clan. He paddled nearer in his small boat. We the Pasigan braves rave so much about. You want those bambans? I need them," said Sinagtala, blushing prettily. The banka drifted nearer the long reeds. A burlow splashed many times in the water. Bamban shoots were held out to her. She flashed a smile at him gratefully. Lilies, you should gather. Kneeled flowers to adorn your hair. 
She liked Magiting's word of admiration. She gathered the bamboo reeds and tied them with wild creepers. Must you be going? said the young man who had moored his boat and stood beside her. Those reeds are heavy. Let me carry them for you. You say you have seen them together. The Kambini, owner of the pearls, was pale. I see them always. The female house slave said to her mistress. Every afternoon, when the shadows of the palm trees are longer. What have they been saying to each other? What did you hear? They speak not much. The slave tattled. They. Look only at one another, and Walangula frequently holds in a bala. And no, 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 no! Don't go on. The Kambini clutched her pearls convulsively. I don't want to hear about it any more. But then she screeched at the cowering bundle of humanity. Alipin, slave, did I not tell you to get nearer to hear what they were saying? I did. I hid myself in the bushes. Came the frightened reply. And I heard him say that two Pasigan nobles who thrust his spear at the stairs of Birangkawayan's heart. Ulangulat wanted to marry Sinagdala, that common basket weaver. Why it could not be? Go, she ordered her slave. Call you Sinagdala. Tell her to come with the baskets I told her to weave. Awe. Yes, when Sinagdala came. She, like Kambini, would tell her that her baskets were no longer wanted. Flirting along the riverside, how praising of that girl! Should she? <laughs> no, ten times no. And like Kambini took off her pearls. They felt oppressive. Those round pellets from the blue waters of Magindanao. They felt cold against her heaving to more to his breast. Carelessly, she flung the glittering string into a bronze casket. Stood on a table of kamagong. There was a presentiment of evil in the morning air. The sky was overcast, and more stubborn clouds were beginning to gather. The village of Mainilad was not happy that day, for the drums were beating weirdly, announcing that an ordeal would soon take place. Five old heads of the village, the wise hukum. Sat in a semicircle before the village populace. The oldest rose and raised his tattooed arm. There was silence around. Nothing could be heard except the faint barking of dogs in the distance and the rustle of the wind through coconut tops. People of this barangay, the old man's voice echoed across the river. La Gambini's pearls, the priceless heirloom handed down from mother to daughter. Four generations have been stolen. Many days of search have passed, but they have not been found. And La Kambini therefore charges Sinagtala, daughter of Pirangkawayan, with the theft of the jewels. The lost Magindanao pearls were left in a bronze casket, explained the judge, and the box was on the kamagong table in La Kambini's room the day Sinagtala came to deliver the baskets. Men shifted their weight uneasily. Sinagtala, swear you that you did not steal the jewels. Again, the deadly silence punctuated with the crackling of burning branches and the greedy simmering of the water in the huge cauldron. Then came the trembling, hesitant voice of Sinagtala. If I did take the pearls of Lakambini, then may the hungry crocodile swallow me and the flames scorch me. Two slaves also accused, likewise swore with the memories of their dead forefathers, by the gigantic aswams that rule on Baleti tops, and by the terrible beings that prowl about on dark, stormy nights. Ali bin, the chief judge, asked one, "Dare you say before all these people that you did not see, you did not take?" The priceless heirloom. Terror was written across the slave's wrinkled face, but guilt was not in her eyes. No pearls did I take. No sacred heirloom did I hide. She said and looked accusingly at Sinagtala. 
But I saw the basket weaver and she was standing by the kambukung table, staring covetously at the string of Magindanao pearls. The judges brought their heads together. They nodded slowly, wisely. Was the Raja's daughter in the room when the basket weaver came? No, she was not, the slave said, gathering courage. And I left the room to look for Lakambini, but I could not find her. And when I came back, the basket weaver was already leaving, and she said that Lakambini did not want her anymore. Noticed you anything in Sinagdala's look? Oh, yes. The girl was pale in the lips and wild in the eyes, the slave added. And the basket shook in her trembling hands. The village people were silent. Birankawayan, father of the accused girl, shut his eyes and muttered under his breath. In the distance arrived coconut fell with an echoing thud. Wish you to make a reply to what you have heard, Sinagtala. A helpless, imploring look appeared in the girl's eyes as she sought for pitying faces around her. She only saw the grim and winking stare of her father, the maker of Sawali Wars. She cringed under his fierce, blazing gaze. No, no, I didn't. Her ashen lips quivered. If the purse can still be found, said the spokesman, nothing more will be said, but if they are not, there was a great shout. A boatload of people from up the river was swiftly nearing the shore, and the young man who stood at the prow was gesticulating wildly. The son of the chief of Pasigan, cried the mighty Braves. Hope surged in Sinagdala's breast. Forgetting. The young warrior leaped from the boat. Others followed him. Men with the wisdom of the aged, he began after saluting the judges. I come with the plea that Sinagdala be not tried. Two, I have with me the indemnity for the lost pearls. Other costly gems sent by my father, the Pasigan chief, that Sinagdala may be spared the shame of the ordeal. There was a glad rumbling among the village people. But the white-haired judges shook their heads slowly, wisely. We thank the Raja of Pasigan and his son, they said. But by the laws and customs of ancient Mainila, a theft done to the family of the Raja is irreparable. The trial must therefore go on. Walangulat rushed to the side of Sinagtala, but the law forbade that they should talk to each other. They only stared and stared at one another. So Magiting was Walangulat, whom Lakambini wanted to wed, Sinagtala told herself. The jewels are not yet found, the judge was again heard, and all the accused have sworn they are innocent. Therefore must we proceed to the ordeal by fire. Lakambini choked back a cry. She alternately crimsoned and paled. She wanted to run away, to hide, but she could not move. She stood as if petrified by horror. Piran Kawayan's lips trembled as he strode away. He stood apart from the crowd, alone in a place where he could see everything. The old man's eyes were moist with despair, and yet his head was held high, and his massive shoulders did not stoop. For Piran Kawayan knew that the blood of his ancestors, nobles themselves, coursed in his veins and the blood of famous men who value their lives less than their unsullied honor. But Sinagbala, his wretched offspring, accused of the theft of the pearls, and his massive arms uncoiled themselves from their folded position. Deliberately, his right hand fumbled at his waist, but then both hands bore themselves into mighty knotting fists of iron. Sinagbala would be the first to pass the ordeal. So it was ordained. Swiftly, she was blindfolded. The smoke encircled her uncertainly, while the fire under the cauldron crackled. Therefore, must the accused Sinagdala as the others who will follow. The voice was but a drowning sound. Dip her hands into the boiling pot and take out the white stone that rests in its bottom. And if her hands remain unblistered, unburned, then it is a sign that our gods, 
find her guiltless, and we pronounce her innocent. But if they be burnt, but Lakombini, the Raja's daughter, torn by conflicting emotions, among which was remorse for what she had brought about, could no longer hold herself. Also, she had seen Perangkawayan and realized what the old man was about to do. Don't, don't! She screamed hysterically as she ran toward the doomed Sinagdala. But Lakambini, owner of the stolen Magindanao purse, was late, too late. For Sinagdala's father had suddenly whipped himself up with the speed of lightning. His hand had traveled to his waist, and out came a glittering, thin-bladed, sharp-pointed dagger. There was only an instant pause after Lakambini's shriek. Then something flashed and scintillated as it swiftly whisked through the air and struck Sinagdala in the breast. Old Birang's hand was firm and his aim had been faithfully true. But Hala, God, she's innocent! I have the pearls! Lakambini babbled foolishly, incoherently. She madly kissed the comely, paling face and pressed the dying girl close to her. Sinigdala, forgive me! I hid the pearls! I hid them! Sinigdala!